Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. Having a wonderful day. Did not plan on recording a video today. I had a coffee on the way home from work. Got a nice iced coffee. I had a coffee this morning, a nice hot coffee, right before the sun came up. So I'm not gonna drink any more coffee right now. Maybe I'll have one later. But I'm here with this beautiful bottle of water on tap. The Mountain Valley from Wichita. The finest water since 1871. It flows through those mountains and it's just amazing. I'm gonna crack this open real quick. So you know, I wasn't planning on making a video, but I got something special that I had to show you guys. We gotta do it together, so I'm gonna make a toast. To you guys, and to this breeding season, just amazing. So in my last video, I showed you the eggs we got from Hansel and Gretel. Gretel laid that beautiful clutch. I showed you the eggs that Paprika laid, mostly slugs, but we got four good eggs. Now I got something to show you guys. Just hold on one second, let me show you. All right guys, I got some eggs right here with the female sitting right on top of them. You can't see who it is. So we're gonna take a close look, take the eggs out, putting in their permanent egg box until they hatch. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. All right guys, so we're looking at the bottom of the egg box. Now this is why I like these bins so much. You could just lift them up and see exactly when you have eggs. Now it looks like all of these eggs are probably good. There might be one slug in there, but I can't tell. So let's get a closer look and I'll show you exactly what female this is. All right guys, so let's pop the lid. Remember, you just wanna be real gentle. The female just laid eggs, you don't wanna scare her. Make this as easy as possible. Now this is my Coral Snow Motley Pearl. Pearl bred with cactus. Pearl is one of my favorites in the collection. I was really excited about this pairing. So I'm so excited that Cactus got the job done. You know, he's one of those beautiful salmon snows. He has the green outlines like a halo around his borders, real nice pinks. So I'm excited to see what these babies are gonna look like. And you know I got both of these from Don Sutterberg at South Mountain Reptiles. So let me introduce you guys to Cactus, the sire of this beautiful clutch. I got this guy from South Mountain Reptiles produced in 2019. He has that nice green haloing around his saddles and that's what caught my attention about Cactus. Just a beautiful male. All right, so I removed Pearl. She gave me a little struggle, but she's okay and I counted 15 or 16 eggs here for a first time breeder, really, really good. Now these eggs are a little bit different than what I'm used to. They're covered with little bumps all over them, but they seem to be perfect eggs, nice and white, firm, not slimy or anything like that. You know, you get all types of eggs, but this is definitely the first time I've seen eggs with little bumps and ridges on them. Either way, they look really good. So let's set up the egg bin with that nice vermiculite and we're gonna put them in. So if we rewind a couple of days, this is how Pearl looked. She was sitting on top of her egg laying box. I was just doing some spot checks and she was looking really, really swell. She did a great job, a beautiful girl. All right, so 15 to 16 eggs. That's a lot of eggs for a first time breeder. We're gonna use the longer shoe box style plastic tub. I just put a little hole on each side. You can barely see it, it's a little pinhole. Just get a little airflow in there. 
Now we're gonna set these up real quick. Got this at Target for like five or six bucks, so get it. And you can, you can pretty much keep these forever as long as you're breeding snakes. So just real quick, this is the substrate that I use for my egg boxes. Vermiculite, I picked this up at Home Depot. I believe it was $6. I got it two years ago when I first started breeding. I still have a little bit left in the bag. It's a big, big bag for the price. So this is one of the cheaper ways to go. And it's a really, really good product. You could use moss. You could use whatever you like. But uh, this is what we're using today. So I showed you the bag of vermicula I use. Now I just use this little solo cup as like a scooper. Makes it real easy rather than using your hand or trying to pour the big bag over and spilling it everywhere. So usually about two or three cups worth of this stuff. And then just put a little bit of water on top. I could kind of eyeball it, I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I usually get it right on the first try. Remember, you could always add more water so it's good to just put a little bit, mix it in real good and then if you need more just add more. If you put too much water you could add more substrate so it's not a big deal. Just make sure you mix it up really really good. Make sure there's no dry spots just get it all incorporated in there. So what you want, put it in your fist, squeeze it up, make sure it still holds its form a little bit, <clears throat> but when you squeeze, no drips are coming out at all. You don't want it to be dripping wet. You just want it to be slightly damp. And once you cover this up, you only have a couple of little holes, not many. So it's gonna hold that humidity and moisture really good. All right, so I'll start in the far corner just make a little indentation, push it in just a little bit so it's covered just a little bit. You want to make sure when you move these boxes they're not just loose and rolling around. So just like that, don't bury them too deep. All right guys, I came outside, the birds are chirping, the wind's blowing beautifully, it's such a nice breeze, the sun's just starting to go down. Show you these beautiful eggs that Pearl laid. 16 good eggs, one slug for a first time breeder, really good. Now these eggs are a little bit bumpy, I think she had a lot of calcium in her system, but the eggs are just perfect. So out here in South Florida, the weather's nice and warm. I have a room with a nice closet with no air conditioning. It stays around 77 to about 80, and that's perfect for these eggs. They'll take a little bit longer to hatch out versus putting them in a warmer incubator, but they come out nice, beautiful, nice and robust. So I'm gonna cover. Now Pumpkin is fidgeting around her enclosure, probably looking for a nice place to lay those eggs. So we have her nice egg lay box right there. She looks really, really swole. This is the biggest I've ever seen her. And she's with Riddler's babies. Hopefully he got the job done and made all the right moves. And all of these eggs are nice and fertile. Look towards the tail, just, she's just full and swole. You can hear those birds chirping. And you know, Pumpkin, she looks like she's ready to explode. This is the biggest I've seen any of my snakes. Pumpkin, she's really swell her whole body, so I'm excited. Probably a couple more days and she'll be laying. I wanna make a quick toast, one more toast. To Pumpkin, to all the snakes, to Pearl, those beautiful eggs, and to you guys. That's some good water. So you know the first couple of years, you buy the best stock and you start breeding. You just hold back the best of the best. 
And then after a couple of years, it could take four or five years, hold back some stuff. That's when you could really start coming up with some ideas for amazing breeding projects. So within another year or two, I'm gonna have some creative ideas on things that I wanna produce. But you know what? I'm just so happy that everything's going well. The birds are talking to me. And I think they're saying, get some beef lo mein, get in the car, head over there. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, guys, I'm here with Pearl. Coral snow, coral snow. She's around 77 to 81. So I put the eggs in that closet. They hibernate, <laughs> they hibernate. <laughs>